Hello dear professors, staff, and audience members. My name is Bora Shin, and I'm currently working as a research fellow at the National University of Singapore Medical School. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to present in this time. Today's topic is living as a scientist from a minor group of society. If I compare to baseball players, I think I'm a minor league player in the female team. In today's speech, I want to deliver my story and emphasizing more on being a female scientist with a lot of minority elements. The following are the things I would like to talk about uh, in line with the theme of being a woman in science and technology world. First, I'd like to present a story about a woman in science. And for my introduction, I would like to present the contents of my research topics and my future directions, plans, and goals. And the last one is the difficulties I'm currently facing and opportunities in Singapore. In Korea, it is well known among the scientist community that the number of female is smaller than that of male. If so, is this phenomenon limited to Korea? What about Europe, where there is less discrimination between women and men than in Asian countries. This figure is that of a study conducted in the UK with about 100, around 100,000 college students. Even in the UK, it is said that only about 35% of people majoring in STEM are women. After graduating, the proportion uh, in the workplace further decreased, making up less than 25%. This imbalance is also evident in authors who publish papers. Figure A is the results of uh, examining the gender of the authors of the papers since 1955. It was found that only around 27% of all authors were women. Although the number of female authors increased significantly after uh, the notice, in the notice, but only 35% of the authors are female. Gender inequality is also different within science. In this figure B, in especially in mathematics, only 15% were able to identify female authors. Although it varies from country to country, it is evident that in most of countries there are fewer female authors than male. These results indicate a gender inequality among those working as professors at academic fields. This figure is the graph showing the percentage of women among doctor students, assistants, associate and full professors at the top 100 universities in the United States. As you might expect, the proportion of women in all fields gradually decreased as they become full professors. What's going on here? Could it be that women scientists simply lack the skills to stay in academic field? The women scientists here are Jennifer Dogna and Emmanuel Charpentier, who were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry at the 2020 
for the development of the of a method for genome editing that is a CRISPR, a very useful technique. There are women scientists who are recognized in academia like them. However, even in Nobel Prizes over the past 120 years, the gender inequality is very clear. Could it be that female scientists are not persistent enough? Why are women who are talented enough to graduate from college with degrees are not processing through graduate school and ultimately earning full professorship? Here is a picture that easily explains the life of women in science. Whether in academia or not, the biggest factor that increased the gender imbalance is being a mother. In this figure, the career paths for women without children and men with and without children are similar. Men and women alike study work, publish the papers, and have successful careers. But when female scientists choose to become mother, there are additional paths to go through. Most students interested in becoming professors in the science graduate from college and enter graduate school soon thereafter. By the time student contemplate applying for tenure track academic jobs, the average age is 33. This graph shows the follicle numbers of the women. As you can see in this graph, from that point on, women's fertility, fertility begins to decline. By age 37, many will have difficulty in conceiving. For women, the tenure track represents the harsh reality of being pregnant, giving birth, and studying at the same time. It's easy to see why women's tenure is poor in both academia and non-academic circles. This reality is too daunting for some women, so they either leave the pipeline or give up having lovely children during this time. Other research shows that among tenured scientists, only 50% of women are married with children compared to 72% of men. And another study is about the number of dependent children and hours worked per week. This study has shown that the more children a woman has, the fewer hours per week she spends on her professional work, while the exact opposite is true for men generally. Many will say that um, maybe things will be different now. I agree that a lot of things has changed since the nowadays. However, according to UK survey, the situation is not be um, different than it was 15 years ago. So, what should we do? The presence or absence of uh, children has a significant impact on the research careers for women. This phenomenon is the same in the non-academic career. Having new children after beginning uh, postdoctoral work increased the rate of dropping out of academic field from 20 to 41 percent. In order to continue to nurture the female scientists, overall policies need to be changed. Within the family, 
couples share housework and should strive to share child care equality. Politically, I think uh, it should be increase the, the parental support such as a child care service and family leave, etc. Also, it is necessary to consider the revision of the policy for the tenure track job. It may not be possible to see changes immediately, but I hope that we all recognize these issues and think about it together from now on. Let's move on to the next. Uh, it's about me. I would like to introduce myself briefly. I'm a female scientist with uh, difficulties as women, an unpopular basic science researcher, and my hometown and my university are located in Gyeonggi not a main city, Seoul. Most of the biofield is congregated in the United States, but I'm doing research in Singapore. If you ask me this question, why did you choose this research path? Uh, I will answer like uh, I grew up surrounded by a natural environment. So I've been interested in the animals, plants, and flowers since I was a child. As my family's financial circumstances improved, I started studying with a simple desire to learn more about uh, life science. I really curious about it and I am satisfied with the duration of my degrees and the current situation. There were elements in me that I had to overcome, but I accepted reality as positively as possible. And I did my research diligently. From my previous studies, I've published a total 20 SCI papers. It is not a top level journal papers, but it has been steadily improving since I started studying. And I've been awarded 11 grants, eight from national institutions and three from private and academic institutions. Recently, I've been selected for a research project by the National Research Foundation of Korea, which supports the researcher like me. Summarizing on my studies so far, it can be organized as a as the adaptation of microorganisms to the environment through a metabolic regulation. I've been studied on bacteria defense mechanisms against physical and chemical factors such as temperature, dryness, ultraviolet rays, antibiotics, sanitizer, low and high pH, and osmotic stress. My studies are divided into four categories. First topic is metabolized from algae bacteria interaction. This study revealed how the interaction of bacteria and algae in the environment affect each other. Second, I've been conducting research on the metabolic regulation of bacteria. It can be divided into uh, small two categories. Research on new regulatory mechanisms for defense against antibiotics. It's about antibiotic resistance and research to find the mechanism of antimicrobial uh, and antibacterial compounds. 
third one, uh, evolutionary response of metabolism to extreme environments. By utilizing the response of bacteria in the harsh condition or harsh environments, I found a novel wizard that can be usefully applied in industry. And fourth, uh, through the study of the key met uh, metabolic mechanism in the energy production of bacteria, these are the glyoxylate cycle, we call the TCA cycle, uh, I found that glyoxylation pathway has another role in keeping bacteria alive in the harsh environments. Among these, I would like to share the most recently published papers first. In the last decade or so, the emergence of antibiotic resistance bacteria has attracted the attention of many scientists. From seven years ago, there have been concerns that the death rate from antibiotic resistant bacteria infection may be higher than that from cancer by 2050. In particular, due to the coronavirus that has hit the world since two years ago, it is estimated that the current antibiotic misuse and abuse will, uh, will increase rapidly which will accelerate the emergence of antibiotic resistance bacteria and the results of such studies are already pouring out. Also to prepare for this, the national government is investing a lot of money to prepare systems that respond to respond to resistant bacteria. To learn how Spurbacteria in here, that is uh, Acinetobacter baumani, this bacteria acquired resistance to one of the one of the uh, last research antibiotics, is a polymish B drugs. I made a lab evolving resistant bacteria through subculture method. In the result of TAM, is transmission electron microscope, I discovered that the bacteria acquired resistance to polymission B by forming a lot of outer membrane vesicles like this here. I've conducted additional molecular experiments using isolated outer membrane vesicles. As a result, I found that superbacteria protect themselves from antibiotics by using outer membrane vesicles as a fake or decoy target. This picture shows the conclusion of Volumation B research. I've uncovered the mechanisms by which resistance bacteria formed more outer membrane vesicles to use a decoy target to polymixin B antibiotics. So this mechanism can promote metabolite synthesis and it is increased outer membrane vesicle production and bacteria can acquire the antibiotic resistance and they can survive and grow. Next, I conducted a study on antimicrobial chemicals with superbacteria. In this research, I confirmed that bacterial killing effect is more higher under the mixed treatment condition of certain antibiotics with uh, the antimicrobial compounds from plant extract mixed treated condition. So mm, I did research to find out the exact mechanisms. At first I confirmed the antimicrobial effect of plant extract uh, through the screening analysis. In this paper 
uh, it is a 4-hydroxybenzaldehyde. We call that 4-HBA. And uh, interestingly, I found that this 4-HBA acts uh, specifically as a supplement to chloramphenicol antibiotics. When chloramphenicol and 4-HBA were treated in mixture at a quarter MIC, the red line in this graph, a similar mortality rate was observed to that of the chloramphenicol at a half MIC, the black line in this graph. And the other uh, same family antibiotics, Thiampenicol, it shows a similar results with the chloramphenicol and 4-HBA. To find the reason, uh, same analysis was performed. Throughout, uh, throughout the result, I confirmed the specific holes, the white arrow in this imaging, were formed in the bacterial cell membrane accounting for the death of bacteria under mixed treatment conditions it's like chloramphenicol with the 4-HBA treated conditions. Through isotope experiments, I tracked how uh, it's like chloramphenicol antibiotics in enter bacteria uh, into the cytosol. And through the HPLC experiments, I confirmed that 4-HBA did not enter the, the cell cytosols directly, but only uh, acts uh, as an activator. Another genomic analysis and various experiments were conducted. Based on the results, I revealed it that uh, when chloramphenicol antibiotics and 4-HBA are mixed, a specific transporter, uh, PKK, plays a key role in killing bacteria more effectively. It can increase uh, the chloramphenicol uptake and induce the cell death. This is my uh, is about my research plan. I will focus on studying the defense mechanism and drug resistance of microbacteria. It's here, uh, this is a uh, the picture for the non tuberculosis microbacteria we call the MTB. In this regard, I want to illustrate specific regulator. In, the, in this picture, I call the A regulator. So I want to know the, the A regulator dependent and independent mechanisms that respond to oxidative stress and the uh, acidic pH in the macrophage, inside the macrophage. And I plan to study the mechanism of antibiotic resistance that allows it to multiply in macrophages when infected in the human body. Rather than uh, aiming for great research achievements, my goal is to keep doing the research I love. If I faithfully work my own path, I think good results will follow. And I believe that in order to do a good research, the family must be stable. I want to develop my own way by balancing work and life well. And I think female scientists have a huge advantage in delicacy and flexibility and detail. So my goal is to gradually create my own field with these advantages. Basic science, um, sometimes called pure or fundamental science, helps researchers understand living systems and processes of bacteria. This uh, basic knowledge leads to better ways to predict and prevent and treat disease. But basic science is an um, unpopular and low-impact field 
but it is really important. So I want to continue to play a role of supporting other researchers as a basic scientist. This has been a brief introduction about my research topics and my future plans. And now I would like to share some of the challenges and the opportunities I've experienced in Singapore. Although my life has been short so far, I've experienced various failures. In doing so, I realized that upsetting the circumstances and doing my best within the limits is the best way. As a female scientist, as I mentioned earlier, I've many concerns about marriage, childbirth, and career disruption. On the other hand, at the same time as a woman, I think there are many opportunities available to me. It seems that there is no such thing as a situation that can satisfy everything. So don't lose hope that the future will be better. And don't give up because you are a woman. And don't limit yourself and please do your best. I hope that there will be more colleagues to work with me. In here, another challenge is the English barrier. Although English itself has barriers for me, it is more difficult to understand the all of different English styles in Singapore. During my first overseas life in here, I experienced a loss of confidence in myself due to the language barrier. The advantage here is Singapore has less competition than the US or other big countries like Europe, so it has more opportunities. After losing confidence in myself, I was able to regain uh, my confidence through AKC activity and postdoc scholarship and plus other activities. And another good thing is that there is no problem with racism because Singaporeans are accepting of Koreans due to the K-drama, K-pop, and K-movie. And also in here, you can more easily meet a talented scientists and diverse people from all over the world. And the salary is higher than Korean uh, post research fellow. From my experience so far, I think Singapore is a country with a lot of advantages for scientists. I look forward to meeting many female scientists who can work with me and support. I want to support each other in the future. Thank you for listening. Uh, since this is a recorded video, so if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.